Hi, this is Bill Saparito, Assistant Managing Editor of Time Magazine, and we're here today to do a transatlantic Skype wine testing with the authors of the World Atlas of Wine, Hugh Johnson and Jancis Robinson. Now, the last issue uh, came out in 2007. What has happened in the wine world since then? The extent of the, the wine producing world has, uh, has grown enormously, not least because of climate change. And wine has just become a much more democratic drink. Okay, so let's talk about the shocks. Let's talk about the new world. Now, there's a surprising to me uh, section on the Republic of Georgia. Here we have um, a, a Rakatsitelli made from one of Georgia's many great indigenous grape varieties. Suddenly, there are people all over the wine world really learning from Georgian methods and making wine in Georgian ways, which includes, for example, fermenting the wine in buried jars under the ground. And how would you describe this wine? It bites in in your, in your palate, and it keeps my interest, I must say. It, it hangs on in there, and I keep thinking, what is it I'm tasting? This is really rather, if not delicious, certainly fascinating. Let us move a little bit uh, south, I guess, to Croatia. So here we have super tangy, sort of Apple Malvasia from Istria, north end of Croatia. It's quite luscious in the mouth. It's not a thin modern wine that's obviously been made in a hurry. I mean, this, this is, there's some skin contact in this. It's actually, it's a good mouthful, isn't it? It is. Everyone is getting tired of the same old international grape varieties and they're re-evaluating local grape varieties and realizing that if they're trying to make their way in the world, they should be expressing what they have that nobody else has. And then we go to a South African white wine, Swartland. Was dismissed as a kind of hot inland cereal growing area, but it's got so many lovely old vines that it's being re-evaluated and it's the source of many of South Africa's most admired wines today. Uh, let's, let's bring it back to the US and, and tell me what, what you've discovered. So this is Boxwood Estate from Virginia, um, and one of the most active um, wine producers there. The fact is that, um, as I'm sure you know, every state in the Union now makes wine, even if it doesn't necessarily grow grapes. Uh, there's just this huge flowering of interest in not just wine consumption, but wine production throughout the United States. So finally, we have the Eastern Frontier. And this is from the, the province of Ningxia in China. The only slight snag is that winters are so cold that vines have to be individually buried each autumn to stop them freezing fatally. But it is actually like a perfectly respectable minor Bordeaux. I would, in a blind tasting, I wouldn't know that it didn't come from Bordeaux. What is the price of Chinese wine? Wildly overpriced and it, it's all about packaging and prestige. It, it's definitely not worth it. And just price. curiosity. Curiosity value, Above all, yeah. people yeah. say, what Chinese wine like? Mm. Well, I th thank you for taking us around the world today. Uh, the book is The World Atlas of Wine, seventh edition, and it's available now.